Successful and accomplished people are not more disciplined or smarter than you and me. They simply get more done in the same 24 hours every day because they set up systems to make it easier for them to get things done. In this video, I'm going to reveal to you my insanely effective productivity framework, which helped me go from a pretty average dude making average money to someone who's excelling in his career, got into one of the top business schools in the US, and got competitive job offers from companies like Google and other Fortune 500s. In the next 10 minutes or so, I want you to put away all distractions and absolutely focus because this stuff really works. And if you follow it, I believe you can really accomplish anything that you set your mind to. This productivity framework is made up of nine pillars and I'm gonna go through them in the same way that you build a building. You take care of the foundational work first and you go from there. Now, without further ado, let's jump into the nine pillars of my insanely effective productivity framework. Pillar one, optimize your physical and mental health. I don't care what anybody says, health is wealth, and you will never reach your full potential if you're not physically and mentally healthy. Before you try to improve your productivity, make sure you're happy and healthy. Pillar two, decide who you wanna be and figure out what are the goals associated with that person. At first glance, this seems like it has nothing to do with being productive, and this is what most people get wrong. You see, as humans, we're a lot more productive when we have a purpose, and establish an identity of who you want to be is the best way to do that. For example, my aspired identity is a successful business person with a good family life. And some of my current goals are to build a career in tech as a strategy executive and to spend time with the family and build a good relationship with my wife. And once you figure out the goals associated with the person that you want to become, we move on to pillar three, where things get a lot more specific. Pillar three, determine the action that you need to take to hit the goals of your aspired identity. This one might be a little bit hard to understand at first, so let's use my personal example again. As a successful business person with a good family life, one of my goals is to build a successful career in tech as a strategy executive. For this goal, one of the many actions that I had to take is to attend business school because most people at that level have that background. So that's what I did. I enrolled in business school at Georgetown when I was working full time. It was one of the hardest things that I had to do. In the end, I pushed through and got it done even though I was super burned out because my aspired identity and my goals kept me going. The first three pillars take care of the big picture stuff. Pillar four to nine are gonna guide how you do what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Pillar four, plan your week and then plan your day. On Sundays, I plan out what I wanna get done in the next week, Monday through Friday, and I try to be as specific as I can. Let's say you want to land a new job in data analytics. Your weekly plan might look a little bit something like this. Number one, update resume to suit data analytics jobs in tech. Number two, apply to 300 jobs online. And number three, network with 50 people that can help me land this role on LinkedIn. And every day when you wake up Monday through Friday, set non-negotiable goals of how much of your weekly goal do you want to get done on that day. My recommendation is to front load your week and get as much done as possible in the first three days because at the end of the day, we're humans, not machines. And naturally, towards the end of the week, your energy level will go down and you won't be as motivated. Pillar five is time blocking. Now, time blocking is the practice of dividing up your day into separate time blocks that are dedicated to accomplishing specific tasks. Time blocking allows you to prioritize and focus on high urgency and high importance stuff in the morning because that's usually when most people are most productive. If you don't time block, your day will be more reactive, meaning that you work on whatever comes your way without really weighing how important it really is. With how many distractions we have to face on a daily basis, this is just not the most productive way to work. That being said, I still check emails first thing in the morning. If anything of high urgency and high importance need to be addressed, I'll do that. And then for the first few hours of the day, I focus on stuff that moves the needle that are important. And for things that are more so keep the lights on but don't accomplish anything beyond that, I save them for later in the afternoon when I'm not as productive. Pillar six is the Pomodoro technique. The Pomodoro technique is a tried and true time management technique developed in the late 1980s. It involves breaking work into 25 minute sprints and taking breaks in between. And after completing four sprints, you can take longer breaks, which prevents fatigue and helps you keep a high level of focus and productivity throughout the day. In order for this to really work, you need to make sure there's no distraction when you're doing these work sprints 
You can't check your phone. You can't text. Don't check social media. Just deep focused work. For me personally, I put my phone away during these working sprints. I only check it during the break. This allows me to be productive when I'm working, but I can also relax throughout the day when I'm taking my breaks. Pillar seven: Just do it for five minutes. Let's face it: We're all humans. There are days where we don't feel like showing up, and we procrastinate. When I was younger, I struggled with procrastination, but what really worked for me is to just sit down and commit to doing something for five minutes. And what tends to happen for me after the initial five minutes is that I enter a flow state where I can stay focused and do work for hours. Pillar eight: Avoiding burnout. Avoiding burnout is crucial to your overall productivity and well-being. This ties back to maintaining your physical and mental health. When you're burned out, your creativity muscle is strained, and you can't tackle challenges with a fresh perspective. Hint: It means you're not as productive. My recommendation here is to have a hobby outside of work and try to find time for it regularly, maybe daily, weekly. It's up to you. And when you feel like you're starting to burn out, you need to take action to prevent it from getting worse. Disconnect. Spend more time on your hobbies. Do a weekend getaway so you don't have to think about work for a little bit. Pillar nine: Have regular progress reviews. A key element of productivity is whether you're working on the right things. As a result, you should have regular review of what you've been doing and whether that's contributing to your goals and ultimately who you want to become. For me personally, I like to do short-term progress reviews every month or so, and then look at the big picture stuff every six months. And you need to be completely honest with yourself. If things aren't going well, don't sugarcoat it. Figure out what needs to change for you to be back on track. All right, this was the insanely effective productivity framework that helped me transform my life. Again, I believe this will work for anybody if you just follow these steps because it truly is a system that makes it easier for you to succeed. If you have any great productivity hacks that's not mentioned in my framework, please leave them in the comments below because I would love to learn. Until next time, this is your friend Oliver signing off. Take care.